Thank you, Johns. It's an honor to be here uh, speaking for the point, do we have effective stewardship in the human and veterinary sectors in Canada? And as this is the first stewardship session, we'll define stewardship the same way it was defined in the Pan-Canadian Framework for Action. Coordinated interventions to promote, improve, monitor, and evaluate judicious antibiotic use to preserve their future effectiveness. I like it because it speaks to purpose. And with respect to, to uh, Lindsay and Carlton, re this really must be conceptualized ecosystem-wide, human use, facility and community, companion animal use, agricultural use, and of course the environment. And we're not just talking about antibiotics and their residues, we're talking about the organisms and their genes on transposable elements. So I'm going to make the proposition that yes, we've made progress, and I'm going to say this with Voltaire in mind, le mieux est l'ennemi de bien, the perfect is the enemy of the good. On the continuum of nothing to perfection, we certainly arrived at something when it comes down to antibiotic stewardship in Canada. Uh, we've come a measurable uh, distance, and for those of you who know the 80-20 rule, we, I don't know how much more effort it'll ta take to push to perfection, but I will say we need to scale up and do it everywhere. Now, I understand why people get a different opinion about this, because we have a heterogeneous federation, 13 different healthcare systems, and everybody's tried something different. And so, if I miss you, I'm sorry, I'm just giving a couple of examples, but in Quebec, after the C. difficile problem, there was a ramp up of uh, guidelines. Quebec uh, turned around the C. difficile problem, but is also the lowest user of antibiotics um, in Confederation. In Ontario, Dr. McGear's uh, home units and the University of Toronto have done an exemplary job of hospital uh, stewardship, and in fact, Ontario runs the lowest hospital use in the country, and that puts it among the lowest use jurisdictions in the world. And uh, out west, um, in Alberta and BC, we have a program of community stewardship focused on both the public and professionals called the Do Bugs Need Drugs program. We'll tell you a little bit more about that, but we've had some favorable results. And across the country, professional groups have been working on choosing wisely. And whether you're an ER doc or a family doc, you're getting messages from choosing wisely about how to choose antibiotic therapy more wisely or reduce it. So we're, we have variation, we learn from variation, it's a strength in the Federation. Now, um, this review was published by Cross earlier this year, and first of all, it's nice to see a, a meta-analysis, Cochrane-style review published on community interventions, but the conclusion was this. Multifaceted communication interventions that target both the general public and clinicians can reduce prescribing in high-income in countries. And this has actually happened even in France, which was a disaster, and now it's just a high prescribing uh, country with a campaign called uh, Les Antibiotiques Ce n'est pas uh, Automatique. So here we are. We've seen this picture before, and we, so Canada looks sort of in the middle of the pack, and that's not good for us. We like to be on top. But what you don't see here is where would Quebec or BC be in here? We'd be breathing down the necks of the Dutch. We're only about 20% behind them in terms of reducing our rates of antibiotic use. If we can do it in La La Land, um, you can do it anywhere in the country. Um, so the, the Canadian Integrated Program for Antimicrobial Resistance Surveillance did us a favor by looking at Canadian trends in antimicrobial use, and we're seeing some declines in general. This red line is the situation with prescribing in BC uh, along 10 years of uh, the Do Bugs Need Drugs program, and we're down 15%. That's quite a significant decline, and we're spending, in real cost-adjusted dollars, 53 million less a year on antibiotics than we were when we got started. There's other things at play with the costs, but the prescribing declines are very real. Now, in hospital prescribing, this is Dr. McGear's world, um, Canada is right near the top. We've got some of the lowest use in developed world hospital prescribing rates from the, the, the best uh, comparisons we can see. And if you were Ontario, you'd again be breathing down the, the, the neck of the Netherlands. Now, this statement was made in the, uh, in, in, in the recent uh, uh, re framework report that we see largely stable and even declining resistance levels in community pathogens. And you know, you can pick a hole in this with any single bug-drug combination. But let's take a look at what's going on in use in the whole community. 
Um, Streptococcus pneumoniae, penicillin resistance relatively stable, not going up anymore. Strep pyogenes remains universally susceptible to penicillin. Staph aureus, after a decade of increase of prevalence of MRSA among Staph aureus isolates, we've seen stabilization and often decline across the country there. We hop over to E. coli, where we've had a big problem with fluoroquinolone resistance because of explosive use of fluoroquinolones in the last decade. Out west, that trend has arrested and is coming down in concert with having switched off fluoroquinolones to other drugs. And I'm hoping that'll happen in Ontario too, because I know that's a bugaboo for Allison. Um, then the real question is really not, we're not doing this just to reduce use, we're not doing it to save money, um, we're not uh, doing it just to resist reduce resistance. We're doing this for, for patient care and for quality of life. So this again, out of the wonderful folks at the University of Toronto, shows that when you have interventions to improve prescribing practice in a specific entity like Staphylococcus aureus bacteremia, which is lethal, the, the uh, blue line there shows you who's being discharged alive. And you're more likely to be discharged alive if you have that intervention than if you don't. So what I'm saying is we now need to scale up what's already working. We have some good examples of it, and we'd like to see campaigns like this, symptom-free P, let it be, across the country. Um, uh, uh, to, to say scale up, the main caveat there is uh, to follow the theme of this morning, we need an action plan because uh, a goal uh, without a budget and a deadline is only a wish, but we can achieve scale up. And to steal from uh, Tom Mary, I'll quote an American president, yes, we can. <laughs>